Hey guys, what's happening? So, this just showed up yesterday. It's a box that came from Italy. It took a couple weeks to get here, and yeah, I think I have a full blown RC addiction here. But uh, it's a BMT 984 1 8 scale on road RC car. Um, so, I've always actually wanted these, uh, even when I was a kid, when I was in, in RC stuff. Alright, so, yeah, this was like uh, 279 euros, so I think it was about $329, plus shipping, so I think I spent about $350 on this, but it's, uh, it's still a pretty good deal, if you compare it to like Serpents or, or like Mugens, but as far as I know, I think this is supposed to be, it's, I mean, hopefully made in Italy, it could be made in China, you never know, at least it came from Italy, it's an Italian company. Yeah, I'm a little worried that the instruction manual is going to be in uh, Italian. But uh, this thing should be super fast. Like all these A scale on road cars are crazy, crazy fast. So let me show you some. Besides this, I want to show you what I've. Other stuff I bought for this. I bought an exhaust pipe on eBay. Power racing. Nothing special. Um, I mean, I don't race this thing professionally. I mean, obviously, I don't race at all. But there's no tracks around my house. Um, air cleaner for it and I also had in a previous video I have a couple engines I want to use like this, this, actually this thing that came out of cooling head this was an eBay lot that I bought and this is actually a Nova Nova Rossi and actually a serpent so this is probably about 15 20 years old and uh, this used to go like in the serpent vectors VTEX that kind of stuff so got a couple different and I also have an RB concept C4 that I want to run in this thing um, like I said, I don't race this thing, so not that big of a deal. Alright. Let's take a look at this thing. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of aluminum on this thing. So, belts. Plastics. And hopefully it came with, oh cool, came with the Sentex clutch. I was kind of wondering about that. Like, it didn't say specifically if it came with a clutch or not. So, that's cool. Alright, I have the tools, clutch, syntax clutch tools from my, uh... What kind of got me addicted was this thing right here. This, uh, this is a Serpent, um, Impact. And I have the A-scale tires on it, but... Man, this thing is crazy fast. So I can't imagine how fast this thing's gonna be with the, with a .21 engine. The Impact has a 15 engine, so... Um, right, let's get this. I mean, it looks like it just, I mean, what's funny is all these A scale cars, they look almost all basically the same. Like, there's hardly any changes in them. I mean, there's a few things, there's minor differences, but basically they're all the same. They all run that Suntex clutch and pretty much the same layout. And here's the chassis. Okay. That will see CNC machine. Nice and rigid. So, yeah, I guess this, this company had made RC cars. Yeah, they're into it like big time, like 20 years ago, and then they got back into it, I guess, from what I was reading. Fuel tank, carbon fiber. All right, so I don't think I'm going to go through the whole build process. I'll just probably end up showing you the car built, because I mean, that could take so many. It's just, all I like to do is follow the instructions. Yeah, look at that brake. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to get this thing started, and uh, I'll be back and I'll we'll get it finished. Well, once I get the, the chassis done, then I'll, I'll come back. Alright, this is going to take me probably a couple days, I'm not even sure, that's a lot of work. Alright, so this seems like it's pretty simple. Like I said, there's no writing anywhere. Um, like zero, like, it's just basically a bag, a picture, and a bag, and a bag. And each of the bags are labeled, it looks like. So like K, I, so... Just gotta find the bag and follow the pictures. Yeah, there's no tuning guide, there's no like steering. I'm assuming they probably, probably think you already know what you're doing if you're buying this car. All right, so it looks like I'm just building all the sub assemblies. That's cool. Came with the metal servo saver instead of a plastic one. That, so a couple of minor issues like the uh, this gear back here with the gear, but the, the, the pulley. A little bit tight, so I had to shave a little plastic out there. It's still a little tight. 
and a couple other minor issues, but kind of working through it. All right, so yeah. got the back half done. Another few hours. I think the hardest part was trying to figure out this sway bar back there. They go to the very bottom right there. Right there. Um, yeah, the, the instructions, because they're not from multiple angles, you can't really see what they're talking about. So, yeah, this took me probably four or five hours just to do this. You know, I had to take it off apart, apart a few times and just, you know, try to look at the pictures and try to figure out. I even actually had to go online and look at, like, assembled pictures and see if I could figure it out. All right, so I'm going to start taking videos now when I find stuff that's kind of odd and I can't figure out. So, in this pin, to get this pin, and I had to drill a hole through one side. It's locked in by that set screw right there, but yeah, you can't get the pin, you know, any other way. So, you can see it. can't see it until right in there. All right. All right, there are the two servos and receiver, fly sky. These are like those are cheapo, they're actually pretty good. They're, they're 20 kg servos. They're definitely pretty, probably overkill for this, but one thing I noticed too is there's no place for a power switch. Um, so I might need to design a box or something to hold a power switch because I know probably a lot of races they don't use them. You just pop the battery out, but yeah, I'm not racing this thing, so. So another issue I'm running into is I actually got a LiPo battery. So in the picture of the, the manual, they show a 5C nickel metal hydrate battery. Uh, but I don't want to use one of those. They discharge rapidly and <clears throat> it's old technology. So this is lithium polymer, LiPo. But the problem is it doesn't really fit 100% on there. Like it won't. Like you're supposed to remove this compartment and pull the battery out the, the bottom. And the issue is that it hits this pulley. So, I think I'm going to design a different mount in Fusion 360 and 3D print it. So, we'll see if I can figure that out. Alright, so it's been a couple days and I wanted to give you guys an update on this uh, BMT project here. So, I had to create a new box. At least I wanted to. Um, the battery situation is really, really tight. So, um, I wanted to be able to charge the battery in the car. So, I created a balancing lead. This is a 2S battery. And also have this uh, charging port on the switch, so I can actually charge the battery in car. It's just it's just too tight to get the battery out. Plus, I'm using a lipo battery, not the five cell nickel hydro nickel metal hydrate. So, and I also created this battery compartment in there. You can't really see it, but uh, in Thingiverse, I mean, excuse me, on Fusion 360, it's gonna be. So that's the original. That's the original thing, you know. And the problem was that this pulley right there, the battery could easily come out and uh, hit the, the pulley there. So I designed a box around this system. Cooling capabilities. That way I just keep the battery in the car like that and it won't hit the pulley ever. And then it's gonna come back out and I have the switch on top and I'll uh, show you that when I'm done with it. So I, I created this little uh, 2S uh, balancing lead extension to put in there and from the front Alright, so I'm finally happy to be done with this portion of it. Turn it on. Has the LED. Yeah, so I think I'll probably submit these over to BMT and see if they like them or not. Uh, if you want these, are on my Thingiverse page. The uh, battery box holder. And this stuff. Alright, cool. So now I gotta put this top back on finally and get all the uh, throttle cables and things done here. So, alright. All right, so this is the engine I'm going to be using here. It's a Nova Mega SX21, and that was in one of those eBay lots I got. And it's a Sentex clutch. Uh, I'm not sure if this engine is going to work or not, just because the has a super, super tight pinch. I mean, it gets better if I want to heat it up, but still, it's that's you know, that's that could create like connecting rod problems. Um, turbo plug, and I actually have a works head on there. Uh, I originally didn't have a head that worked right on it. So, the cool thing about these, uh, most of these Novorossi engines is they're most, most engines are actually based on them. So the, the pattern's the same, so you can switch the uh, cooling heads, but, all right, that's it. Um, it's going to be difficult to get this thing to fire up the first time because the pinch is so tight. So I don't know if somebody had you know, repinched it, but yeah, that's not normal to have it that tight. Especially for a used engine, so. All right, so I'm going to get that on the uh, car here, and... Back, get the exhaust pipe on there. All right, so the pipe I'm using is just some little cheapo $30 R 
on-road uh, pipe that I got on eBay. But, uh, yeah, I'm not racing this thing. I'm just kind of street cruising this thing. So, I mean, obviously, if I ever got into race, I'd probably get a better pipe and engine setup. But, yeah, I'm actually looking at a couple of Navarazzi engines. And, you know, um, I mean, I guess if, while I'm learning this car, if I blow up the engine, I'm not going to be too bugged if I blow up this engine that I only got for a couple bucks. So, all right, that's the exhaust pipe. So, I'm going to come back tomorrow. But I'm getting close to being done, you know. Got all that stuff, the electrical done. And that's going to finish up the uh, fuel lines and the throttle linkage. Make some adjustments. And fire this thing up. Yeah, it's been a bit, I mean, I've done a lot of, spent a lot of hours so far. Um, yeah, I mean, if you don't do it right, I mean, this thing could be like an expensive nightmare. All right, so here's another design I'm not really 100% happy about. Um, it puts this thing at a really weird angle underneath there. And I saw another picture online of some guy that shaved this out and had the ball on the top versus the ball on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to go underneath it, but it puts it at a weird, really weird angle. So, I'm going to use my little Dremel tool here. Cut that out where that dark line is so I can put the ball on the top so it's more of a straight shot here to here. All right, so i got to address, address the trim, but the max, you know, the trim the max. Yeah, way more or less stress on this thing right here. Before, I was at that weird angle, so. so I did make a modification to my bump box. I created this little extension adapter on there. Uh, this actually fit my 10 scale before, but it wasn't far, far enough frontwards to get it to line up. So now it does. Yeah, so I don't know if I mentioned this, but this edge is super tight. So I'm going to be using a dynamite glow plug, turbo glow plug, but this was originally was a Michael Salvin EV4 uh, Nova. All right, so I'm going to be using some Byron's uh, 20%. And the carburetor settings, it's a high speed needle is three and a half turns out and running a seven millimeter uh, Venturi. Okay, so I want to double check everything. I could probably cut that shorter, that length rod. Like I said, the pinch is so tight on this engine. I'm going to heat it up first with my uh, heat gun before I even actually run the pump box on it. I don't know if this pump box is even powerful enough to run this thing because it's only a single motor. So, let's see. video so look forward to having fun with this thing at coming videos and if you want any of the stuff that I made I 3d printed um, I'll be on my Thingiverse page down below like the switch carrier the uh, lipo battery holder and uh, that thing and that extension thing right there so all right look forward to having fun I'm just gonna run our half tank let it cool down and uh, just look for things like this you know like the like I said my, my gear came off my pinning gear came off and just look for any kind of problems. You know, give it some horsepower, make sure that the uh, second gear is going in correctly, and just kind of run it a couple times on my on the bump box here, make sure everything's okay. But cool, had fun. I mean, it took me a long time. I mean, at least 20 hours probably, you know, going through, checking everything. Because the manual didn't have any written instructions. It was just pictures. So if you're building this car and you want better instruction on how to set it up, look at the uh, Serpent 988 or 989 manual. Working with 989 or 998, but um, the Serpent's almost identical to this thing, so 
Alright, cool.